Okay, um, I'll actually just start with a little bit about um, the Productivity Commission's uh, new role in the, the water sector. Um, some of you might be aware that the National Water Commission was uh, wound down and some of the functions were transferred over to the Productivity Commission, namely uh, review every three years um, of progress against the uh, National Water Initiative. Um, this is uh, by the states and the Commonwealth. Um, so that was the subject of an inquiry last year and the report is with the government. Um, we also, which we actually just had the terms of reference released a few hours ago, um, have a role to review every five years the implementation of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan. So those terms of reference are up on our website if you're interested. Um, and there'll be an issues paper in a couple of days um, and a series of meetings looking at a range of issues, which trading is uh, one of those, um, including others such as SDL adjustments, Northern Basin Review um, and compliance. So we're going to have a, a relatively busy year, I would say. So just looking at last year's inquiry, um, it was looking across the elements, the eight elements of the National Water Initiative, which include the, the foundations that Alistair mentioned about the water entitlements and planning, trading, and, and so on. Um, our draft report looked at uh, revising some of the elements and policy settings within the National Water Initiative um, looking at the treatment of extractive industries, so mining and the like, um, and bringing them into the entitlement framework. Um, bolstering, I guess, the needs of in, um, Indigenous Australians and how cultural uh, water for cultural purposes and economic development are treated. Um, and also a significant um, focus on urban water, environmental water management and uh, um, building or investing in new infrastructure in terms of government investment. A couple of those do have trading elements, particularly urban water. Um, there's still places and barriers where urbans can't trade with rural. Um, Canberra is one of those in terms of uh, trade between New South Wales, Murrumbidgee and Canberra. Um, there is a work program to look at that, but the barrier remains. Um, the other barriers have been removed. For example, Adelaide has bought, this SA Water, has bought entitlements out of Victoria um, over the last few years. Um, I think environmental water management is another element that um, our report will look at, which has aspects and um, discussion around the future around trade of the environmental water portfolio, and um, that that uh, should be a matter of course as long as it actually aligns with um, the environmental um, objectives of the of the CHU. Uh, and the state holders, of course, we've got to remember OEH and the view have significant holdings of environmental water also. Um, I won't go too much around trade. We've heard, and I think everyone knows, the, the um, increase in um, probably production and the trade volumes, etc. that there has been um, a success story, I guess, around, particularly in the Southern Connected Basin, um, regards trade. There are a few issues that we identified last year. Um, one is the efficiency and transparency of trade rules that currently exist. Um, some of these, such as the Murrumbidgee Intervalley Transfer Limit. Um, after being in water for over 20 years, I still find it very difficult to understand what rules actually um, turn that on or off and what the settings are. Um, we're obviously trying to have um, protection, so the broad goal of trading policy is to optimise the value of water while protecting third party interests, but there's a lot of rules like this which are not open and transparent and clear um, to third parties and, to be honest, I think to governments also. So um, there is some work also in the service standards for trade approvals and transaction costs which were set uh, well in the past with different technologies um, in place and we think they should be revisited also. These are the transaction times uh, and the costs associate, associated with trade approvals and the like. And I'll skip through some of the reliable information. I think we'll have a discussion about those. But there is a lot of improvement in the actual registers and within the states. There's been 
past investment, I think $30 million in a national system, which went nowhere. Um, so I think it's worth revisiting at least um, interaction between the state registers and some consistency, um, particularly in information provision. Um, just touching on this year, the Murray-Darling Basin Authority does have a role through the plan in actually overseeing trade across the basin. And there's a basin plan water trading rules, which are overseen by a working group. They actually have a strategy for looking at issues in, the, in trade. Um, and there's some of those, so that's on their website. And this will be something that we're looking on at this year and of interest. Um, my first com comment in this area is coming from the Productivity Commission is, is it's very difficult to see the benefits of removing or addressing some of these, these barriers. Um, and also, there is no work, as I can see, looking at the costs of removing those barriers and potential third-party impacts, So, which I think backs up some of Alistair's comments. Some of the future risks we have here are the, the basic market information as opposed to trade information. So there's a lot of focus on the trade information and prices and the like. Um, I think there's less and, and more risk, in a way, associated with, well, what's happening in the long term with reliability of delivery, what's happening in terms of the risks with climate change and how that'll actually play out um, to different entitlements, because we do have basically a 10-year time frame where a lot of the water sharing plans, et cetera, give you information about your product. Um, so in terms of some of that market information, I think it's the improvement in openness and transparency around hydrology and the issues um, across the system about what changing of patterns of usage by the CHU and the environment, as well as major sectors of the industry such as horticulture and what, how that may then impact on the water product itself, um, I think is something we need to have focus on as the manager of the resource. So just a quick... Um, comment on our timeline. I mentioned we're going to have an issues paper released uh, in a few days and visiting communities with the draft report in August um, and a final report to the government by the end of the year. Thank you.